Okay, so I have to make sure that my sound levels are approximately correct and I find that the sound levels could be reduced a little bit just to make sure that I don't overmodulate as I'm speaking. I can sometimes speak somewhat forcefully and I'm ready. My name is Dirk Mittler and I'm going to create a little walkthrough on how to create a terrain object using the program called Blender. This, this exercise assumes that there will be a two-dimensional image to use as the basis of our terrain object. The, uh, the two-dimensional image could come from anywhere in theory, but I'm going to create one right here just in order to demonstrate the concept. So I've just opened a program called Terrigen. It's the first generation of Terrigen that was made available for free and you don't necessarily need to use Terrigen as, your, as the source of your two-dimensional image. It's just that for nostalgia's sake, I like to use it. So within Terrigen, we can change the size of our landscape, and it defaults to 257 by 257 pixels. Now, the free version of Terrigen would only go up to 513 pixels, which should be plenty, but if you needed a greater resolution to your terrain, you'll have to switch to paid for software that gives you the, the higher resolution. I could go to 513, I'm not going to do it right now. I'm going to be at 257 by 257 pixel terrains. And the, the next command that we give is generate terrain, and we get a little dialog with Interigen. And the, the little image that we see up here in this, in this rectangle is the two-dimensional image that was just produced. Now, just to illustrate the concept that we're going to follow through on, I'm creating a three-dimensional preview of what that two-dimensional image actually implies as a terrain, because I want to know whether the two-dimensional image that I chose is what I want. So if I'm satisfied with this two-dimensional image, uh, the actual three-dimensional geometry that results from it, what I'll want to do next is I'll want to export it. And here there is an important detail. This particular program would like to export SGI images, but it's important not to use an 8-bit channel depth. And the reason why is because while 8-bit Greats, grayscale images are wonderful for casual viewing. If you turn them into geo geographical altitudes, the quantization from 8 bits will become considerable and you'll have something that doesn't resemble a good terrain. You'll have blocks in your terrain, and by the way, if you use an unsuitable image, you may also end up with vertical drops in your terrain because of sharp contrasts. So this particular program likes to export its 16-bit channel depth images as SGI images. Let's just go ahead and do this. So uh, I already have created a, 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 an image in a, previously to prepare for this, and uh, it's called Test SGI. I'm just going to overwrite it with what I created now. I click on Save, and of course, because the file already exists, it just confirms that I want to overwrite it, and I've created my two-dimensional image. I don't need to save it with Interigen again, but now I'm going to get to the main part of my screencast, which is that I'm going to go into Blender 279 b That's the up-to-date Blender version today, and now I'm going to show the the, the viewer how to convert this back into geometry. So Blender defaults to showing me a cube. I'm going to delete the cube by hitting delete. And what I'm going to do in object mode is I'm going to add a mesh, and the mesh that I'm going to add is a plane. Now a, a plane in Blender starts out being a single quad, a single rectangle that, that doesn't have more refined geometry other than the fact that it has four vertices. I'm going to use the S button, with S, I can scale the terrain object. I'm going, I try to avoid using hot keys because they're hard to remember. So now that I've made the terrain the size that I want it to be, I go from object mode into edit mode, which means that I can actually edit the vertices. And once I've done that, in the left-hand column, I have a, a command here called subdivide. So because I want to get to 256 by 256 approximately, I subdivide, subdivide eight times. One two, three, four, five, six, 
seven, eight. But this isn't good enough. Right now, because of the way my higher level program represents the geometry, it consists of quads. And one problem with quads is that their vertices cannot have arbitrary positions. So to create a quad, or to create a plane that's completely flexible, in, in so that I can give its vertices any altitudes I want, I have to go into face edit mode down here. And then under mesh, there is a sub-menu called faces. And within faces, I can tell it to triangulate. Where is triangulate? Triangulate faces is here. This doesn't do anything that's immediately obvious, but what it does is it draws a, a triangular it draws a diagonal line through each quad, turning it into two triangles, which means that for any given quad, the four vertices can be arbitrarily positioned without creating logic errors. So I've created my three-dimensional geometry, which looks rather flat right now. And what I want to do is I want to apply my two-dimensional image to it. So what I would do is I would next go into the texture editing mode up here. Up here there's 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 this little this little checker red checkerboard called for textures. And I I introduce a new texture into Blender which would be a two-dimensional image. Clicking on new allows me to open an existing image down here. And the existing image is the one that I just saved for the second time. It's under, it's in my temporary folder, and it's called test.sgi blender. 2.79 allows me to open my SGI images directly. So I open the image, and it gives me a little preview. It's got a, a grayscale pattern just like I wanted to, and the, the name of the texture is texture. Of course, we can always double-click it to rename it to something which will be important in serious graphics applications because there could be many textures, not just one texture called texture. But I've, I've successfully imported the texture into Blender. And so the next thing that I need to do is I need to go to my plane object, which is already selected, and there is a little tool here which, which looks like a monkey wrench. It's next to the one that looks like the chains. And next to the one that that's actually the 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 vertex the da the object data vertex information, it's the monkey wrench. And when I click on the monkey wrench, I get the ability to add modifiers. A caveat to modifying this terrain is that I must not be in edit mode to modify it. I have to go back into object mode, and now I can add my modifier. And the modifier that I choose to add is under Deform, and it's called Displace. Here it is, just from the menus using the mouse. So the Displace modifier hasn't done anything meaningful yet because I haven't applied the texture to it, which I've imported into Blender. So uh, I could create a new texture. I don't usually find that's a useful thing to do within Blender. Or I can go here, and I can select the texture that I just called Texture. And when I do this, all of a sudden you'll notice that the terrain, that, 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 that my three-dimensional object is no longer just a flat rectangle, but that it seems to be a finely sculpted, convoluted surface that has 257 by 257 vertices, which is exactly what I set out to do. Now I can I can I can move this around just to allow people to understand that this is in fact three-dimensional geometry. If I move it up high enough, I'll get to look at the underside of it. But the thing is, because I, because nobody's interested in looking at the underside of a terrain, which often doesn't uh, doesn't render properly, we're only really interested in the. Um, in the in in, in 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 regular perspectives of it. Also, if I lower the terrain far enough, the ter the, the grid that gets displayed in the viewport is above the terrain, so that you see the grid. But if I raise the terrain high enough, that the grid is obscured by the terrain. And I notice that there are some artifacts here that are not ideal. I have these lips at the edge of the terrain that hang down. Those lips are an artifact of how my original program, Terrigen, exported its two-dimensional image. For some reason, it left a pixel at the edge, which uh, 
which has a, 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 the altitude of zero. Now, this type of a three-dimensional shape, um, the three-dimensional shape is, um, is, is, is not interesting as it stands because it doesn't resemble the terrain strongly enough. I'm going to scale this shape along the y-axis by pressing S, Y, 2. Ah, I chose the wrong axis. Okay, so S, Y, 0 0.5. So this, I chose the wrong axis. That was the y-axis. I'm going to try to choose the z-axis to see if that's better. S, z, 2. So that was the correct axis. What this does is it amplifies the, the, the z-axis of the geometry, which is the blue arrow here, just so that I get more distinct amplified geometry. So now I can just G, and with G I can displace this object. So again, it's a terrain object that suffers from the fact that at the corners, at the bottom corners, it seems to have a pixel twice or multiple times that just hangs down because of the, ra the way the original two-dimensional images defined that pixel. For gaming purposes, we would need to put features on that terrain such as surface colors, rivers, bushes, and that's why in gaming, Terrain objects are said to be multi-textured. This is a, a terrain object that only has a single texture defining altitude. Because the purpose of my tutorial was to show people how to use Blender to convert two-dimensional pixel, value, two pixel values into altitudes that have been applied to a three-dimensional mesh. So I don't know, do I get any luck if I, if, if I try to show the viewers the underside of this? You can sort of see the underside of it. You can sort of make out that it's three-dimensional. That pretty much concludes my tutorial. Um, for the sake of simplicity, if the viewers do not want edges and lips that hang down like this, they have to use two-dimensional images which in the corresponding places do not have pixel values of zero. That's why these lips are hanging down. And that's about all I wanted to do. I don't think I have to save this project. It just concludes my tutorial. And so um, that's a basic operation which gets done in 3D graphics and it can be done using Blender.